So we are going to determine is the integral from 0 to pi of e to the sine squared x dx greater than 3 pi over 2. Now immediately when we look at this integral, we see that it's not something that we can actually derive an answer to and evaluate to get an exact answer, which is the reason that this problem is phrased as a greater than question, not a question of what this integral exactly equals. So let's see if we can look at this and get some kind of approximate idea of what our answer is going to look like. In order to do that, we see that this integral has e to the power of something. And we know that we can expand e to the x using its Taylor series. So let's see what happens if we try to do that. We know e to the sine squared x is going to equal, well first we get one, then we get plus whatever our input is, sine squared x, then after that, we get this input squared over 2 factorial. So sine squared x squared is sine to the fourth x over 2 factorial, plus next is sine to the sixth x over 3 factorial, and so on. So if we want to take the integral from 0 to pi, we can just do that on both sides of this equation here. And what I want to do is take a look at the first couple of terms. We have the integral of 1. And then next, we have the integral of sine squared x. And then we can take the integral from 0 to pi of all the rest of the stuff. Because this is kind of annoying to integrate, but we know how to integrate 1. And we can integrate sine squared x pretty easily as well. So let's take a look at these two. Well, for the integral of 1, that's fairly simple. We're going to get x. And x evaluated at pi and 0 is just going to give us pi. If we look at the second integral off to the side here, in order to do this, we can reduce the power of sine squared using the formula sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 dx. And this formula, if you write out the double angle formula for the cosine, simplify everything, you'll get back to sine squared. And now we're at a point where we can actually integrate this because we can split this up into the integral of 1 half, which is nice and easy, and then minus the integral of 1 half cosine 2x. So if we look at this first part, the integral of 1 half dx is going to be 1 half x. And then once again, it's going to be evaluated at pi and 0. So this is going to be pi over 2. And then the next part, 1 half cosine 2x. Well, if we did a substitution here, right, we would have u equals 2x. And then our du would be 2 dx. So in order to get this dx into a du, we would have to divide by 2 on both sides. So we have a 1 half, but then we're going to multiply by 1 half again to get 1 fourth. And then we'll have sine 2x evaluated at pi and 0. What is this? Well, sine of 2 pi is just 0, and sine of 0 is just 0. So in fact, this entire part is just 0. So our answer becomes nothing but pi over 2. Which means if we go back here, we're adding up these two integrals to start off. We have the integral of 1 dx is pi, and then the integral of sine squared dx is pi over 2. Which means these first two parts are going to be 3 pi over 2, which is what we're looking at to start off. And then we're adding a bunch more stuff. And the question is, what is this stuff? Well, we don't know what it is, but we do know that sine to the fourth x, because we're taking an even power here, is always going to be positive. And we're dividing by a positive constant, which means this is still going to be positive, this is still going to be positive. All the rest of the terms are going to be positive. And if we take the integral over 0 to pi of some positive number, we are going to get a positive answer out. So whatever this is that we're adding, it's going to be greater than 0. So we're taking 3 pi over 2 plus some positive number, which means our result is going to be greater than 3 pi over 2. So if we go back to our original question, we know that the integral from 0 to pi of e to the sine squared x dx is indeed greater than 3 pi over 2.